G'day, and welcome to more Space Engineers. Today, I'm going to take a look at sensors. And that's because having to go through airlocks like this, going open, close, open, close, and having to interact with them, yeah, I'm too lazy for that. So let's use some sensors and let's figure out how to make that better. And also to make a more functional airlock that doesn't lose air every time we use it. To start off, we're just going to move away from this base for a moment. Pop down a block and pop down a sensor on top. Before we place this, let's have a look at these models. On our HUD, we've got the sensor arranged in its upright position. Like with the remote control blocks, the images that you see on the HUD for these blocks are the way to look at them in terms of up, down, left and right. If we place it on this surface of this block, which it won't let us, so we'll go with the top. Right now, it's, from my perspective, upside down. So let's make it the correct way up, according to the HUD, and we'll place the block down. What you can see at the moment is the interactable portion of the block, and then this red bit. That indicates that it's got no power, so let's give it some power. And now you'll see that that has a blue tinge to it, that indicator portion. And if I move closer, it will go green because currently, as their default, sensors detect people. So let's have a look at how it's doing that. If we go into the terminal, you can see the usual things up the top, and then you'll have this setup actions bit, which will allow us to actually set up what the sensor will trigger. Then you've got this left, right, bottom, top, back and front extents. Those are the distances from the location of the model, the very center of it, that the sensor will detect, the range it will detect out to. These indicators of the left and right, top and bottom, are from the perspective of the sensor itself. That's why it was important to note which was the top, and which was the bottom, because that helps us to be orientated to the list of directions that are in the menu just here. So when we look at the sensor block, if we imagine we're actually occupying the space of the sensor block, so if we turn around 180 degrees, left will be that direction, right will be that direction, top will be that direction, bottom that direction, and lastly, forwards will go out from the block, and backwards will go through the block that it's sitting on. Sensors will detect through solid objects, that's not a problem at all. So you don't need to worry about walls and things being in the way of them. It also means that you have to worry if you are planning on using walls as blockers for the sensor range. How are we going to get a better visual indication that we've actually set up our range correctly? Well, it's actually quite simple. If we go to our info, just like we looked at center of mass with the parachutes, with sensors you can show the sensor field range and if you check this box and then on the sensor do show on HUD, it will show up. Right now this is showing up with no antenna but there are many things you'll find around that say you have to have one. I don't know. What we're seeing is the current sensor range. This is a cube that is five meters out in every direction from this central point. We can prove what I was saying before about the top and left by hopping into the control panel again and dropping everything down but top and oops, left. So if we move back, you can see that my character's left is this way, but the sensor's left is that way, and that's why it's extending out in that direction. The sensor's top is that way, and the sensor's front is moving away from the block out this direction, which you can see now. One important thing to be aware of when you're thinking about sensor ranges is the size of blocks in Space Engineers. Space Engineers large grid blocks are 2.5 meters along each side. So if we want to create a sensor that will detect only the cube that it is part of, that's almost possible but not quite. 
because it will always extend out at least one meter behind it. But in every other direction, we can make this true. So if we set our left extent, and thank you to everyone who pointed out this tip to me, it's so valuable. To get a value where you can type it in, simply control and left click on the slider. Oh, so much pain while I forgot that one. So we can set this out to 1.25 meters. Same with the right. Same with the bottom. Same with the top. Back set as short as it can be and front set to 2.5. If we have a look now, that will be perfectly the size of the block. And we can confirm this by trying to place another one on top. And you'll see that the red outline matches exactly. Small ship blocks, they are 50 centimeters each. Five of them goes into a large ship block. So you can see one, two, three, four, five blocks. And that's the 2.5 meters we just set up. So large ship blocks, 2.5, small ship blocks, 0.5. Let's go on to a useful application of sensors. Something that I would like to use them for is automatic doors. Rather than having to click a door every time you walk up to it, wouldn't it be nice to have it like a normal automated door that exists in shopping centers and everything else in modern day? Well, that's pretty easy to do. Let's have a wall, we'll have a door, and we'll pop a sensor above it. You can place this sensor anywhere close to the door you like, either on the floor, the ceiling. I like it above, just because it makes this easier to show. And also it makes the ranges better because you don't end up sticking quite so far out from the door. So if we set this up, show it on HUD, and what we're going to want is a left extent just beyond the width of the door. So let this, let's set this to 1.5. The right just beyond the door as well bottom we want it to extend out to the very floor that means we need the 1.25 meters of the half block where it starts and then the whole block below that so that ends up being 3.75 meters top extent as short as possible back extent we want it to go out just beyond the wall on the other side so let's make this three meters and the front extent Let's set this to 0 0.5 if it'll let us. Nope, has to be one. So why don't we set the back extent to 3.5 so they match? And let's have a look at that. This means anytime, once we set this up properly, anytime you enter this zone, the door will open. And if we have a look at the second function of these sensors, anytime you exit that, it will close. Let's find out the name of our door is sliding door 10. We'll set up our actions. If we type in 10, that door will be the only one that shows up. When we have our setup actions, we have two possible actions that can be set up with a sensor. The first action is the action that happens when an entity enters the field. This event might also be triggered when a sensor is switched back on and something is already within that volume. It's been a bit variable in my experience so far, whether that happens or not. So if we set this to open on enter, and then the second slot is what happens when the entity exits the field. So we'll set that to close. And if we walk back, we can see the sensor is ready because it's blue. And currently the door is open. So if I walk in, it should stay open. And as soon as I walk out of this field, it should close. And there we go. And walk through and it opens and close. If you're wondering whether I'm actually pressing F, let's extend these fields out and prove that this works at a greater distance. So let's move front extent out to 5 meters and back extent out to 8 meters. Okay. So now, I cannot interact with that door. I walk up, it opens. If I sidestep out of this field, it will close. Sidestep back in and it opens. Walk through. Closes, opens, closes, opens, closes, opens, closes, opens, closes. Bed goes up, bed goes down, bed goes up. So there you have it. That's an easy automatic door. 
you can apply this to airlocks as well. This little station has two different airlocks set up on it. There's this very simple one that's just two doors immediately against one another. And then there's one that's a bit more complicated, but adds a bit of extra safety for the oxygen so that you're not losing it every time you go through. This actually has three doors. It has an interior door and two outer doors for the airlock. One that opens into the space and one that opens out to space. There's probably a better way of phrasing that. Indoors and out to space? What I've got set up is a button that will change the state of each of these doors. You can see if I look through, that middle door is actually open while the outer door is closed. If we press this button, it opens my inner door, closes this middle door, and you'll just have to trust me, opens the outer door as well. What that means is that the pressurized air from here goes through this door into this space. That's okay, because it's closed. Then we press this door button again, and it closes that inter internal door, opens the middle door, which allows the air that was in here to enter this volume, which immediately gets sucked into this vent, which is permanently set to depressurize. Then I have to press this button, and it will close that middle door and open the outer door. By using the buttons instead of manually opening the doors, you will never have all three doors accidentally open at the same time, bleeding all of your oxygen to space. But it's a bit of a pain having to push a button because you have to look for it, and if you're like me and never have your crosshair on, that's not the easiest thing. So can we upgrade this thing with sensors? I think we can. What we're gonna do? So we're going to get rid of these button panels. So what we want is a system where as we walk up to this door, it will open. And as we walk out of that sensor, it will close. Same with this middle door and same with this last door. That way, two doors will always be closed and only one door can be open. And that should prevent any oxygen loss whatsoever. Let's set up our first sensor. We don't have the option of setting it above with the way I've laid out this airlock. So what if we place it down here? And let's set up this one's range first. What we're going to want is something that as soon as you enter this square will open this door. And as soon as you exit into here will close. And same from this direction. Enter this square, opens, exit, closes. So, given we know which way around this is oriented, we want left extent at one point well I might go a little bit beyond the block 1.5 right extent 1.5 bottom extent 1 top extent we want it to be 1.25 to get to the door block then the 2.5 through the door block and then about one beyond that as well so that will be 4.75 meters back extent can be as small as possible and front extent can be 2.5. Let's confirm that I haven't mussed that up by show on HUD. And that seems a reasonable volume. And from this side, yeah, that's pretty reasonable. Just check the name of the door. Airlock 2 in a door. Very simple, let's set up this sensor. Airlock 2. So this is the innermost door and we'll set it to open and set it to close. We'll go through and we'll set up sensors for the other two doors in the same way. Now we've got a reasonable airlock. We can walk up to here. It will open that door. When we get into this space, it will close the outer door. And from then on, the outer door will stay closed. We will open up into the middle volume. That door will close. And then we will open the final door, which We'll pressurize this area, but only this small volume before the doors close. And we can do the same in the other direction. Pressurized. Closes. We don't lose any more oxygen. Opens. All that oxygen goes into the vent. That closes. And we walk outside. For one person, that works pretty well. You might even be able to remove the middle door. With these three sensors, we've got a pretty solid airlock. We can walk all the way through, 
don't really need to slow down, don't need to interact with anything, and it will all do the work for us. But what if we wanted to use these sensors to make our airlock a little bit safer? So that with three people, you'll struggle to actually get these to open accidentally in the wrong way. Yes, you'll always be able to force the doors open and make sure they're all open, but at least we can make it so that it can't happen accidentally. And the way I've done that for this example, and there are other ways, there are other better ways, but this is what we're going to show for now, is using these two sensors. I added these. What they will do is this one on the right here, it is going to close the outer door whenever someone is within the volume it's got set. This one is going to turn off the sensor whenever someone is in this range, and that's the sensor outside the airlock, and turn it back on once people leave this volume. So these volumes, they actually start outside the innermost door. They start here, and as soon as you enter this, that outermost sensor is off, and the door is forced shut. As soon as you exit it, as you'll see here, that sensor gets reactivated and that door is able to open again. If we take a look from a spectator cam, we can see right now I'm inside that volume and that sensor outside is red. That shows that it is now deactivated. I can move forward of that line and it gets reactivated and I can walk outside. Back inside and it's off. What we've got here is the three door airlock seen from above. You can see Splitzy on the right, wave for us, there we go. And then you can see another player hidden in the shadows over by the door, the Zebra Monkeys player. If we want to check our safety features and ensure that they're working, what we need to do is wander Zebra Monkeys into the middle of the airlock. And let's see if that still leaves everything working. And when Splitzy tries to walk up to the outer door, it doesn't open. And you can even see that the sensor range disappeared from there. We used to be able to see it, it was displaying. But as soon as that sensor got switched off by the Zebra Monkeys player being within the other sensor's range, it went away. So we're nice and safe, unless I decide to manually open that outer door, which would be a bit silly. So a reasonable safety feature. If you guys have been watching this and wondering why I've been doing things in a way that's really, really horrible, and you've got a way that might improve this airlock, let me know in the comments. I would actually love to hear about it. I always like to improve what I'm doing, and having you guys let me know what I can do better has already helped me a lot. As proven earlier when I control clicked on a slider, which was a shortcut that I had forgotten for who knows how long and was driving me nuts. So thank you Onabound Noob and Wrath Baby for pointing that one out to me. I have every intention of looking into timers and some scripting that you can use to make airlocks in the future. But for now, I think this sensor one works reasonably well and should be relatively accident proof. I've uploaded the blueprint of this little base onto the workshop so you can have a close look at how the sensors are set up yourself if you want to, or if you manage to come up with a better system that uses just sensors, link it to me in the comments and then we can make sure everyone goes to that one so that they can see how to do it even better. As always, there is plenty more to come, so I'll see you then.